What is good, y'all? Me, Phenomenal Kid, back here with another WWE podcast number six. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's number six. If it's not, oh well. Hope y'all having a good day, like I am. Uh, so we have the WrestleMania Fallout. Raw after Mania, SmackDown after Mania. You know, the Raw after Mania tends to be the good, like, the best Raw of the year, and... I gotta say, the, this past Raw wasn't that bad. I, I quite enjoyed it, and same with SmackDown. It's probably the best. Like, the best after the brand split, because those two shows were pretty good last week. Or this past week. Um, I am recording this on Sunday, so this video might be delayed. I don't know, because, you know, I, I like to delete the... Just think when I have my delays. Um, this bit, I'm recording this on Sunday, April something. Um, we got quite a few things to talk about, so without a further ado, let's get on with Raw. Um, well, actually, before I get on to Raw, I kind of want to talk about NXT because if I talk about NXT last, la if I talk about NXT last, I'm gonna leave off with a bad review, and I don't want to do that. So NXT was it was kind of boring. I don't know if I, it was just filler matches. I mean, nothing very special. So yeah, I just want to get that out of the way because nothing special about NXT. It was just, eh. It was in the Amway Center, and yeah, should have been pretty something cool, but nothing special. Alright, but we got NXT out of the way. Boring. Raw um, started off with Waltman Reigns doing, trying to do a po pro pomo, promo, but you know how the fans are after he just defeated The Undertaker and possibly retired him. Man. The, the fans got all ECW on him. They were chanting F.U. Roman and, well, uh, chanting the real word. And, you know, I'm trying to keep this PG. But, you know, A-hole, you know, oh, they were, like, vicious to him. And I like it. And then Roman, when it was about to talk, they were, like, boo, like, booing him and stuff. And all he got to say was, this is my yard. Oh, I'm the big dog. This is my yard. Yeah, bull crap. So, you know, that was pretty cool of the fans. And then the Hardy Boys, um, they had a, a title defense against Gallows and Anderson, and obviously they won. I mean, why wouldn't they? That'd be dumb if they if they lost the titles already and just one day after the return, the epic return. But I really hope they do a cut of promo and at least Matt is broken because I want to see them cut a promo. Uh, like, I didn't, they didn't cut one. They just, like, wrestled. I say hope they do next week. And yeah, you know, Hardy Boys are back. I'm happy for them. Hope they actually get a good run and not some, you know, crappy run. But then, a uh, surprise return by Vince McMahon, surprisingly. Uh, because, you know, McFoley is fired and um, Stephanie <laughs> got put through the table. So Vince McMahon is out here talking about a shakeup. This interested me because I thought we could have just another draft. That would have been cool, but no, we're having a shakeup. This interests me. I don't know what it's going to be, but supposedly Raw and SmackDown are going to make some trades and stuff like that. So, you know, um, I'm interested. I hope you superstars go to this other show and these superstars go to this other show and stuff like that. So then he introduced a new Raw general manager, and we all saw it coming. We all had to saw it coming. It was Teddy Long. Yeah, Teddy. No, no, I'm kidding. It's Kurt Angle. You suck. So yeah. Um. Yeah. Teddy Long doing. Oh, I'm not. My bad. And then, you know, Kurt Angle coming out, and he's the Raw General Manager because it's true. Oh, it's damn true. So yeah, we're happy to see Kurt Angle here. I'm happy to see him. Now he's a Raw GM. He used to be a SmackDown GM. Now he's Raw. Yeah. And then, Tommy, what else happened? Ooh, the Revival made their debut, finally, after having, like, match of the year against AOP and DIY at Orlando. Probably best match of the WrestleMania weekend. I don't know, it's a tie between them and Triple H versus Seth Rollins and Non-Extinction match. But anyways, they made their debut against the longest reigning uh, NXT champions, The New Day. Wait, why did I say NXT champions? I am so stupid. Sorry, guys. I don't know, I'm feeling crazy, so... um. Against the longest tag team champs, the New Day. So yeah, they uh, they beat them, and then uh oh what else happened? Braun Strowman 
putting a notice on Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar's happy with his universal title, you know, like, maybe he was depressed or mad that he didn't have a title, but now he can say he has a title because Goldberg is gone. Bye-bye, Goldberg. Uh, and yeah, Finn Balor came back before I get to that. Braun Strowman versus Brock Lesnar. I'd like to see that, but you know Brock Lesnar. Um, I don't know if you might want to do the match or not, because you know how he is. Remember when he was champion, like, 2014, I think? Yeah. When he beat John Cena, he would only defend the title on any special occasions, but I don't know if he's going to want to. Braun Strowman, um, you know, is always being, um, he got scared and, you know, slept. But then Finn Balor came back. Oh, we all had to see this one, too. I mean, why wouldn't they bring him back? Tag team match. Seth Rollins Finn Balor versus Samoa Joe and Kevin Owens. And Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho having a rematch for the U.S. title, which is kind of confusing because I thought Chris Jericho was going to go on a little tour with his band or whatever the heck they're called. But I guess he's staying around a little bit longer. Yeah. And, yeah, that was raw for y'all. That was pretty good. It wasn't terribly bad. Oh, and the women's had their match. Emma came back and Dana Brooke is now face, I guess. So, I mean, I guess I'm happy to see Emma back. I don't know. So, we get to SmackDown. <laughs> and you know how SmackDown is. It's always great. I just love SmackDown. And then, uh, we got the Perfect 10 making his debut. Surprise debut. I didn't expect Ty, Ty Dillinger to, to make his debut at all. Going against Kurt Hawk is obviously beating him. And, yeah, I hope Ty Dillinger doesn't, just doesn't get buried. I feel like SmackDown is the right place for him. And especially for someone else who I'll be talking about later. But, yeah, I hope the Perfect 10 actually does something in his business. Probably have a really good mid-card run. And... Potentially into the main event scene. So, who knows what we'll see for Ty Dillinger. Then, I know John Cena and Nikki Belaroff doing their own stuff. But, it sure does feel like they're still here with Miz and Maurice. Oh my god, I love them doing this kind of stuff. I hope they continue. Because now it's just John Cena is the Miz and Nikki Bella is Maurice. Or is it the other way around? I don't know, but I like it when they dress up as them. It's just funny and... I don't know, I just like it. And, you know, they're doing their promo and stuff. And then, um, someone else... <laughs> oh, and then we hear the... Nakamura! You know, with the violin player coming out. So we all had to expect Nakamura coming. Yes! Finally! I don't know why he's, he's running the NXT who fell short, even though he was there for how long? A year? Yeah, a year. But that feels short. I don't know why. But anyways, Nakamura made his debut. He didn't have a match. He just appeared. Yeah, he just appeared. But hey, it's still something, you know? Yeah. And then, yeah, I'm happy for Nakamura. Hope he gets into that main event scene rapido. Like, fast, fast, fast. And then, uh, was this the main event? I think it was, I don't remember. Dean Ambrose versus Baron Corbin in a street fight. This match was actually not that bad. I have to say, it was not that bad. Um, They did some crazy stuff uh, through that that sort of spine bust through the table, elbow drop through the table. Man, we should have seen this at WrestleMania. No lie, we should have seen this match at WrestleMania. This match was on fleek, man. Instead of their, the other matchup, the pre-show was horrible. I didn't like it. It was boring. It was bland. Yeah, we should have seen, I don't know, for this match. They should have just had this match. At WrestleMania and the match at WrestleMania on SmackDown, like, swap, like swapping. Yeah, so SmackDown, um, how long are we into? Oh my god, this is my shortest podcast ever. We're barely on the 9 minute mark. Well, we're 9.25 now. Um... Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm done. What else do I talk about? I'm trying to save up money for more YouTube videos. Um, any shoutouts? As always, Expert Killer. You know, cool co content, gameplay. Go check them out. It's cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, any other stuff? I mean, I'm thinking of doing vlogs, but nah, I don't want to. I don't want to show my face yet. Probably hold off that bad idea. Um... 
I don't know, probably doing gameplay in the future. Let me know what else I should do with this YouTube. All right, now we hit the 10 minute mark. So that's all I wanted to do, just hit the 10 minute mark. But you guys can still leave ideas of what should I do in the future. But okay, I mean, this is my shortest podcast ever. So yeah, SmackDown and Raw. That's all for y'all. Ooh, shake up predictions. Shake up predictions. Let's do that. Uh, who do I want to see go to SmackDown, go to Raw? What about the Cruiserweights? Will the Cruiserweights be affected? I don't think so. Oh, speaking of the Cruiserweights, Kalisto should probably go to Raw. I'm just saying, I mean, he's been atrocious on SmackDown after that horrible pipe bomb he did at the draft. So, yeah, I feel like he should be going to the Cruiserweight division, probably get more spotlight, but then again, some of them don't even appear on television. Like, like where's Cedric Alexander? No one knows where he went. But anyways, I don't know. He probably should. It would make no sense for him to be on SmackDown. Uh, I, I'm a little bit biased. Or I'm a little, not really biased, but I want to see Cesaro on SmackDown. Same with Sami Zayn. Um, I want to keep the the, the, the the tag team because oh, I, Cesaro ships are just hella entertaining for me. Entertaining for me. So yeah, keep maybe transfer them over to SmackDown. That'd be great. And then Raw will get... Kalisto, I guess. Sami Zayn. Uh, yeah, I want Sami Zayn on SmackDown because he's doing nothing on Raw. Uh, possible Shield reunion? I don't know. Maybe. Dean Ambrose. But he's the IC champ, so I don't know if champs will be transferred or not. Um, his and Maurice, they should stay on SmackDown. I mean, I don't see him going anywhere. AJ Styles, I see, yeah, he, he said that he wants to stay on SmackDown. So, yeah, I keep him on SmackDown. Um, you know, maybe any talent that's actually pretty good on Raw that's not getting get any TV type should probably go to SmackDown, like Curtis Axel. Mm, you know, he's the son of Mr. Perfect, and yet WWE's not using him. Maybe he needs a push, I don't know. Um, you know me, I can't think of anything. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe the women's division, yeah, we could probably change and shake up the women's division a little bit. Like, Charlotte maybe going to SmackDown, because she's done about almost everything on Raw, I mean, yeah. Having even having her a match, just a normal match, will be boring against anyone. Because who does he have to go against? I mean, there's only four women basically. Well, technically six, but it's only only treated like four women on the Raw Women's Division. But mm, probably go to SmackDown. Maybe another woman from Raw could go to SmackDown. Maybe Mickey James, Natalia. I don't know. Well, you know, I don't even know what's gonna be about. So we'll just see this. You will just see tomorrow. I mean, I'm recording this on Sunday. This might be the book delayed. Because, what time is it? I'm checking. It's 7.18. Alright, now this video's have gone on to 13 minutes. I guess I could, I'll just end it here. Um, you know, shout out to Expert Killer. Go check out his channel. And, yeah, that's all I have today. Bye, guys. Hope you have a good day. And I'll see y'all later.